WWDC 2022 is set to kick off this Monday, and as we do every year, here's a brief list of what we're expecting to see at WWDC 2022. Now, we have an entire guide going over every single detail compiled into one easy location for you to browse, and so in efforts to keep this video short, I'm going to go over some of the major stuff, but be sure to check out that article for the full rundown in the description down below. Now, the main star of the software portion of the event is no doubt always going to belong to the next version of iOS, presumably this year called iOS 16. Most of the rumors about iOS 16 have been pretty vague, so we know a little about the operating system update at this time. In years past, new versions of iOS have actually leaked out pretty early and have given us insight into the feature set that's coming, but that actually didn't happen this year. We do know a few rumors that have surfaced recently, like support for an overhauled lock screen, with wallpapers that are said to feature widget-like capabilities. We can also expect significant improvements to notifications, thank you, thank you, and the Messages app could see social network-like functionality with a specific focus on audio messages. Apple is also apparently offering users fresh Apple apps, and while that also seems very vague, because, well, it is, uh, I think this means that some of Apple's first-party applications that we know and love should hopefully see a good refresh of sorts. There's also a potential new Apple Music classical app with the interface based off of the Prime Phonic app, which was something that Apple acquired last year centered around classical music. There have also been a few other features rumored to come later this year in conjunction with iPhone 14 models. And the most notable feature is an always on display mode that would allow users to see pertinent information without needing to interact with their devices. The iPhone 14 models are expected to get a car crash detection feature, which would dial emergency services automatically when a collision is detected, and this would require new iOS 16 functionality. iPadOS 16 will get many of the new features that are introduced in iOS 16, but Apple is also working on some additional functionality that's iPad specific. With iPadOS 16, Apple is aiming to make the iPad behave more like a laptop than a smartphone, and the new iPad software will be one of the biggest updates announced at WWDC. The update will now feature a redesigned multitasking interface that makes it easier to swap between tasks and see which apps are open, plus it will allow users to resize windows. Apple also plans to implement new ways for users to deal with multiple apps at once in what sounds like a much more Mac-like multitasking experience, which is something that a lot of iPad users have been clamoring for, and I personally, if true, cannot wait to test this out. When it comes to Mac OS 13, there have also been minimal leaks, but there have been some reports about an overhauled system preferences app uh, that will bring it more in line with the settings app on your iPhone and your iPad. Apple is also expected to revamp some of its default apps. Just like I mentioned in iOS 16, I'm guessing the same is going to apply to some of the Mac counterpart applications, with improvements coming to apps like Messages, Mail, Safari, and more. WatchOS 9 will have some updates that impact the day-to-day -day operation and navigation on the wrist-worn device. Those features include updated power saving mode that will allow for the use of apps and features while cutting down on battery usage, expanded atrial fibrillation detection, improved health and activity tracking, more workout types, and a refresh of existing watch faces, and more. Now, tvOS doesn't often get many new features or any kind of hype before the event, uh, at least compared to the upper, other operating systems, and we don't really know a whole lot about tvOS 16, but it is rumored to include new smart home tie-ins. You may be able to do more with your smart home products through the Apple TV following the launch of this update. Hardware at WWDC has been, I would say over the last decade, very hit or miss, with the past several years being focused solely on software. but it is possible that a few new products get announced. And we just made a video about one of them, which is the most likely that you can expect to see, and that's the refreshed MacBook Air for 2022. The next generation MacBook Air is expected to feature a total design overhaul with a MacBook Pro-like shape that does away with the tapered body. It will be thinner and lighter and is expected to come in multiple colors, similar to the iMac. 
The MacBook Air is expected to feature slim off-white bezels and a matching off-white keyboard, and it could come uh, around 13.6 inches in size. The MacBook Air will probably be equipped with a next-generation M2 chip, which is expected to feature the same number of computing cores as the M1, which is eight, but it will include speed improvements that make it marginally faster. It's also rumored to have improved graphics with nine of those 10 GPU cores, which is up from seven or eight in the current M1 MacBook Air. We also know that Apple has a new Mac Pro with Apple Silicon on the way. And if you're wondering, how do you know that? Well, I mean, our, the hardware engineering chief, John Turnus himself literally told us at the last event that one is in the works and it should be coming later this year. And so perhaps Apple could do what it has done in the past with the Mac Pro and have a little sneak peek of the new Mac Pro at WWDC and then release it later on in the year. And lastly, one that many people are probably super excited about or really interested in and want to see, but sadly just might not happen this Monday, is the reveal of the long-rumored AR VR headset. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman and Apple analyst Ming-Chi Kuo have actually said that the headset is just simply not ready to be introduced at this point in time, as Apple still has some kinks to work out. Quo believes that Apple will launch the headset in 2023, and German has said that Apple does not have plans to have a full-blown announcement of the headset at WWDC. Now, that said, a trademark for Reality OS, the operating system for this headset, was discovered recently, and it features a foreign filing date deadline of June 8th, 2022. That's a legal requirement, however, and it appears that the date is really unrelated to WWDC, just more or less a coincidence. Of course, Apple is planning to live stream the event on its website, Apple TV app, on YouTube. But for those who might not be able to watch it live, Good news, you can catch up on all the news by watching my recap video, as well as hands-on with the latest software by subscribing to the channel down below. And also, the rest of the MacRumors team will be hard at work covering the event as it goes on on MacRumors.com and through the MacRumors Live Twitter account. This has been Dan with MacRumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.